In this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the Trend Very Jig and what specific project and job have I got it lined up for. Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel. And yes, let me introduce you to the Trend Very Jig, which is very kindly being supplied to me by Trend for purposes of review. Now, if you're new to the channel, I've had a collaboration, if you like, with Trend for quite a while now, to be honest. Uh, but I'm not sponsored or paid by them to say nice things. All of my opinions are my own. But if you do choose to buy the Verdi jig from the Amazon link in the description box below, then a small commission will go to the channel. So what actually is it and what is it used for? Well, in effect, it's kind of like four rulers, if you like, that are bolted together and you can adjust the size and shape to form different sized rectangles in the middle, which can then be used to route out a recess. Now, if you're using a kind of plunge router thing like this, and if the actual rectangle, if you like, is larger than the uh, actual router itself, which might cause it to tip a bit, it does come with these this kind of plastic thing here, which you can just fit to the bottom of your plunge router, which keeps it nice and level, when you're actually routing out your recess. That's not for me though, because as a one-handed woodworker, I don't use plunge routers in this way because for me, it just doesn't feel safe or correct. But I am after small, narrow recesses of which I can use my handheld palm router which will fit and sit nicely on there and hopefully nice and safe for me to use to route those recesses out. Now, there are one or two accessories you might wanna consider if you're thinking of buying the Very Jig. Firstly, one thing you definitely need uh, is a guide bush, which is depending on what size of a straight bit or whatever bit it is you're using, you need that to work with one of these. Now there's a couple of other accessories you might want to consider if you're thinking of buying the Very Jig. And one is this, these, I got the long pivot clamp kit, uh, which I bought these because uh, I thought they'd come in really handy, um, which actually look like this, and they can fix into the underside of the Very Jig, which means the top is completely clear. You can use kind of these kind of clamps if you want to secure it to your MFT. However, they might actually get in the way when you're routing with your palm router or uh, with your plunge router. Uh, so maybe it's best to actually secure it underneath. One other thing you might want to consider is this one of these digital depth gauges, because this will give you very accurate reading on the actual depth of your router bit when you're routing out your recesses. So what do I need them for? Well, if you've been following the channel recently and you've seen my uh, blue resin and walnut table build and a few little uh, tutorial things I've been doing with that, I've got to the stage now where I want to fix the table legs to the underside of the table. Now these are what the table legs look like. Okay, and a quick tip for you, if you are ordering table legs off Etsy from the supplier I got them from, one actually means one and not one per, okay? So I'm waiting for the other leg to arrive. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, in the meantime, so what I'd like to do is I would like to create a shape using the Very Jig for this and then I can actually recess, route in a recess for these table legs so it fits nice and snug on the underside of the wood resin table. So this video is gonna be, there we go, taking you through the process of doing that and one or two ideas that I've picked up that might help you along the way whilst using the Very Jig. Right, I need to move the camera around, we need to get a bit of a closer in, zoom in, sorry, and then uh, let's see how we get on. Okay, let me talk you through how I set up the Very Jig ready for routing the recesses and using this table leg as an example. So I've got this piece of timber here, which I'm just using for the example. I've got an overhang, which I will come back to later as to why. So I'm making sure I'm securing the actual slab in place on my MFT. So say for example, we want to put the table leg recess, let's just say for example, here. Now, if I was to take the Very Jig and adjust it and secure it into place, now, as 
So if we were to secure all the screws and lock that in place now, the actual space for the recess would be too narrow because we have to factor in the width of the guide bush when doing our recessing. So if I just take that back out, excuse me one minute. What I've found actually works quite well is just to take a piece of cord, I mean any size cord really, doesn't you know, just to give you a bit more of a guide. Now for you guys out there, this would be a very quick process as someone only working with one hand, it takes a little while longer. Just bear with me. Right. Now if we bring the jig into place now, and that cord will pinch up a little bit onto the table leg, and that should give us, that's more like, that's it. That's give us that little bit of extra space, which is just enough to accommodate the guy bush. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to secure all the screws in place. That's that done. Right, I can take the table leg out now and the cord. Before I do anything else, you need to check those corners for square. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Right, so the next step is to secure the Verdi jig either to your table or to the piece. Now this is why I've got an overhang here because I'm going to use those clamps I showed you before to secure these two points here. So let's do that now. Now, just as a little bit of belt and braces here because it's secure to it, but it raises up slightly on this side because I've only secured at these two ends. So you can take another clamp just to help pin it down in place. Now, you don't want to put too much pressure on here. Ideally, it could have done with being here, but it's okay. If we look here, that is now solid. And we're now ready to bring the router in and to route out our little groove here. Now, I just want to mention why I think these kind of digital depth gauges come in really handy because, say, for example, uh, this table leg's six mil thick, but you don't want to be routing six mil in one go. So you might want to be doing it in two mil passes. So you need to get a really accurate reading on where your router bit is. So the way I've found to do it is if I just take my router, the way I work anyway, and pop it on the Verdi jig here. And then if I just loosen that off and then I can hear the router bit hit the space, sorry, hit the work face and then lock that off. So that now is at naught. All right, so let's get the depth gauge in place and I'll show you how I think that works properly. So we've got the router bit set now at zero in relation to the Verdi jig. So if I want to make an alteration to that, if I take my digital depth gauge and get a measure there, okay, and then reset that. So this is now at zero. So if we make an alteration to the depth on the router, let's try that, okay. And then come back to our setting. Now that's 3.6, so that's too much for me, I think, so I want to go up a bit. Okay, 1.45. Let's give it a go with that, and then if we need to make any alterations later, we can do it. And it's on the test piece, so let's see how we get on. Yep, 
have to say, I'm happy with that. It just sits in very nice. That's obviously the bottom of the leg. There's a little bit of space either side, which is what you want, because you might get a tiny amount of movement from the wood over the course of the seasons and temperature changing and stuff. So if I put it back in the way it should be, the way table legs are, yeah, that's happy with that. Now, I have had a few practice run-throughs with this on bits of MDF and bits of scrap and stuff. Uh, just to give you a few little pointers, um, if you're palm routing like I am, make sure you keep it flat to the surface because if it drifts off slightly on an angle, you catch the very jig frame, you catch the metal frame and whoa, uh, squeaky bum time if you do that. Uh, so just be very careful uh, and also make sure when you stop it that it's fully stopped rotating before you lift it up. Not gonna lie to you, I have to, you know my honesty, uh, I have done that a couple of times, I've caught it and I'm like, God, uh, it, it, and it scares, it does scare you. So, quick safety tip there. So I suppose the only thing I've got to do now is actually do it on the thing that, the actual table itself. So I'm gonna get that set up, um, go through the processes again, literally just a mil, mil and a half at a time, down to the six mil depth and see how we get on. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Really impressed with this jig. Uh, it's going to be so handy for me. I've got a lot of tables to make this year and just having the opportunity to route in those recesses in a consistent and safe manner, just working with one hand, very, very handy and I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Just a couple of little points to recap. Uh, when you're setting your router, lots of multiple shallow passes, you know, a mil, mil a half maybe, and then build it up to, in this case, six millimeters. If you try and go at it too much, I think there's potential for the router to take charge, could bite into the side of your jig, metal shards, that kind of thing. 
so just be safe and be careful with that one. Uh, I would definitely recommend you get one of these uh, digital depth gauges. Uh, this is a trend one, there's a link in the description for this if you're interested, but obviously there are other manufacturers as well, comes in really handy for setting your router. And also did like these clamps that go underneath, just helps to secure the jig in place, but it's tucked away underneath. So no need, I do have the you know the odd clamp near it, but not multiple clamps surrounding it, which might get in the way of your arm whilst you're trying to do the routing process. Oh, and just to finish off, uh, yes, the table leg was upside down when I zoomed in, just to show you a little space on either side. I wasn't actually mounting the table leg upside down. Uh, and I did say table leg, because I've got to wait for the other one to arrive yet. So uh, anyway, that's it for this one, folks. As ever, take care. Uh, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.